It's East Tennessee State and the Marshall Thundering Herd tonight from the Henderson Center in Huntington, West Virginia. There's a look at your starting lineups, Ron. And as far as the Marshall Thundering Herd is concerned, they have made some wholesale substitutions. Eric Clay, the senior, gets a start tonight. Frank Martin, who's been their sixth man all season long, he gets a start. Brailsford will start in the middle. Fernando Ibanez, a freshman from Wheeling Central High School in West Virginia, also gets a start. So very interesting starting lineup tonight. Marshall leads this series, and they won last year's game, a real thriller, 107-103. And Greg Dennis, the outstanding senior for East Tennessee State, who's, uh, who's back in West Virginia, a native of Charleston, West Virginia, in the jump center against Sean Brailsford. And quickly, East Tennessee State's got the tap to the basket. Chazelle Silver as they go back outside. A motion offense by Alan LaForce. Marshall University, uh, Dave, is in a 2-3 zone defense. Calvin Talford can't get it down, and here comes the herd back the other way. Got to like the way they took a little time off the clock, passed the ball four, five, six times, and that's the thing that Allen LaForce wants them to do. Marshall has done a much better job recently of taking care of the basketball. Inside it's Luke Gross. He's short with the jump hook and the follow. Luke Gross has really asserted himself in the last few games. He had 18 points the other night against Appalachian State. He at 6'9 can be a big answer to the problems that Marshall has. He's a transfer from Indiana State, and you put your finger right on it, Ron. He's been coming on in recent games. I'll tell you, last year they had almost a non-existent inside game. He needs to play well for White uh, Freeman. Talford misses with another three attempt quickly. It's Eric Clay into the front court. Strong for the bucket. Gross has got the rebound. Goal tending on Greg Dennis for the goal. Be happy with the early minutes of this big man, Luke Gross, because Luke Gross early in the season didn't play that well. They didn't count on him to score a lot, but he has really played well in the last five games. Really started to come on when Tyrone Phillips went to the bench for the second degree knee sprain. English beats the double team across the zone. Niblet, good Dennis. Three point shot is no good. Long rebound comes back out to Niblet. English on the block. Got an over the back right there, I think, Dave. Alan Force barking out instruction. I don't know if he agrees with that call, but, uh, you know, the early moments of this game, Marshall University with that zone defense, you're going to see right here coming over the back from the right side of the lane. Good shot by English. You're going to see right there, Greg Dennis, I think, might have been guilty of the, of the foul. So Marshall's got the ball and a quick 4-0 lead. They beat the full court pressure. Now Frank Martin will attack the man-to-man. -man. Martin on the run. No good. Eric Clay, the strong rebound. I'll tell you, that's really setting the pace early in the game. They're controlling the offensive glass. East Tennessee State must do a better job on the defensive boards. 6 nothing. Marshall with the early lead. The herd continues in their matchup zone. Niblet. Nice Feed pass. down inside to English. Goes up strong and draws the foul. Nice dish. That's a great pass from Niblet. He's been injured lately, but uh, Alan Moore says we got to have that leadership out of that point guard. That time he penetrated into the middle. Look at him go to the free throw line. Great look inside, and Rodney English gets fouled as he tries to go for the bucket. You can see another angle right here. That's a great dish inside. Good look by the little point guard. English hits the first of two. He's the leading scorer in the Southern Conference. We'll fill that in for you. He's averaging about 20 points a game. 19-9 to be exact. Once again, full court pressure. But Martin splits it. Niblet guarding Frank Martin. Ibanez to Clay. Inside to Gross. Oh, Martin with a three on the way. Tapped out front. East Tennessee State quickly back. Ah, you got to give that pass quicker. Trezell Silvers took it too far. He had Rodney English clearly open. He gets a bounce pass to Rodney English, and you're going to see a jam. He tried to take it too far. 17 minutes to go. First half, Frank Martin all the way to the bucket. Oh. High for the rebound. Calvin Talford ahead of the pack. English. Oh, what? Luke Gross. <laughs> Luke Gross. They love it here. Four on two with a trailer. 
need to take some time. Need to set the thing. Don't get it in a running game with East Tennessee State. You'll be in big trouble. Play the short jumper. Oh! Another thing, Dave, that's really interesting. This is a young Marshall club. They have got a little excitement going now to get to the early 6-2 lead. And you're going to see right here the shot and the foul on the offensive boards. Marshall doing a good job. You see the push off underneath by Talford. But the interesting thing is that this Marshall team, with all the excitement, to get the lead. They need to settle down now because if they get in a running match with the Buccaneers, they're going to be in big trouble. Uncharacteristic of recent games, an early turnover for Marshall. The Herd had only 10 turnovers on the same court Saturday night in a heartbreaking loss to App State. And Dave, that's a good point. They were averaging almost 20, and in the West Virginia game, they only turned it over 13 times. Dennis tries to feed it to English on the blocks, and Ibanez comes up with the steal. Clay goes strong to the bucket, and it's Dennis this time with the great block, and here we come the other way. English, nice the pass. dump down to Talford. Up and good. Brazil Silver. Calvin Talbert on a good dish. He, he almost got fouled. He couldn't go baseline. They did a good job. Marshall did a good job of sealing off the baseline. Marshall looks to get the basketball inside. They want to get it to Gross. They just did. Clay to the paint. A strong move. And Dennis has the rebound. It's a three on one. Silver. Gross can't hold the rebound, but Frank Martin chases it down. Rodney, Tennessee State can't convert on a three-on-one fast break. Rodney English again, a little upset with his teammate, Frizzell Silvers. Silvers needed to pass that ball. Rodney English was open on the left lane. Martin to Gross. Gross gets it. He loves the jump hook. Oh, two-man game here. Turnaround, no good. High for the rebound goes Talford. Came from the top of the key to get that. What a great athlete. See if he buries it. Right home. <laughs> I like to see him play. He can do it all. Calvin Calvin. Rams it right home. And East Tennessee <laughs> State has their first lead at 7-6 to six at the 15.05 mark. And there, Talford nearly came up with the steal. Just underway from the Henderson Center, East Tennessee State leads Marshall. State leads Marshall and run early on. The defense comes to the forefront. Greg Dennis. Greg Dennis blocks Clay's uh, shot attempt, but look at this one. Luke Gross, he's going to follow Rodney English, and boom, he says, get that out of here. Those two kids, as you see the field goal percentages early, East Tennessee State, 25% Marshall. And so uh, they're just filling each other out. Turnovers two to one, not a not a big difference. That's got to be very pleasing to Dwight Freeman because, as I said earlier, they averaged 20 a game up until the West Virginia game day. Ron Tyrone Phillips has checked into the game for the Marshall Thundering Herd. He's been out of the lineup since suffering a second-degree knee sprain at Western Carolina two and a half weeks ago. Frank Martin with a three. Frank Martin, great perimeter shooter. We said that at the opening tonight. And I saw him against Chattanooga this year. He hit about six from that three-point circle. He can fill it up. The sophomore can shoot it. So the Marshall Thundering Herd goes back into the lead at 9-7. to seven. A little 2-3 zone that's kind of created a little problem for East Tennessee State. English with a tough luck shot that's off the back of the iron. And Eric Clay corrals the rebound for the Herd. English can get such good position despite his, his size disadvantage. He's just 6'4". Well, he's a great athlete. Very mobile. Can do a lot of things. He, I, I just love to watch Rodney English. Might be the best player in the league. Right there, right there. We told you about, Eric, about Luke Gross and his jump hook. Missed it that time, but the Herd draws the foul. Well, you're going to see right there a great little shot jump hook. Let's see, where's the foul? Not much contact right there, but the official perhaps had a better angle than we did. Marty Story checks into the lineup for East Tennessee State. He started his college career as a football player at Clemson, then transferred into play for the ETSU Bucks. Doesn't look to shoot a lot, but a solid defensive player. I tell you, he loves to 
to body up on you. He'll <laughs> get that chest up. I like to see him play, especially on the defensive end. Jerry Pelfrey has also been inserted into the East Tennessee State lineup. Now Tyrone Phillips has got a problem. Tight defense from Greg Dennis. Two-man game. Martin and Gross. Now they swing it to the other side. Gross always looking for the pass inside. Martin can control it, and the turnover gives the ball back to East Tennessee State. You know, one point we make, uh, Harold Simmons, we featured him at the Open. He hasn't really even played yet, and I'm not really sure, but uh, he's really had a lot of problems, but you got to credit the fact that Martin has played so well coming off the bench for uh, Dwight Freeman. Martin's been a real penetrator from that point guard position. Here's Talford with a three. And he's feeling it from outside the arc. I tell you, when he starts feeling it, you get him the ball. You just get him the ball. Put it in his hands and let him operate. Martin trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Gross is going to take Pelfrey inside, and he draws the foul. Smart play by Luke Gross. He sensed the mismatch and tried to take it to the bucket. Well, since uh, Luke Gross has been in there, Jerry Pelfrey came into the game to guard him, so it's an interesting matchup. But you're going to see right there to reach in. Jerry can't reach in like that. The left uh, hand reach around, and the referee picked it up. Team foul number four on East Tennessee State. Marshall's committed only one team foul in the first seven minutes of the first half. And if that name, Pelfrey, is familiar, his brother does start as a forward for the UK Wildcats. Gross battling inside. I just can't believe Gross. Where has he been? Great look at him. Double team and takes it for the bucket. Alfred lucky to get that one back outside to Niblet. Now he'll take a three. There's that perimeter game, three-point shooting. Of course, the Buccaneers last year, one of the best in the nation. Phillips goes strong to the bucket. Dennis with another rebound. I don't like that shot if you're a Marshall fan. They got to take time off the clock. They can't get in a running game. East Tennessee State just had too many great athletes. I think Tyrone Phillips that time just wanted to see what kind of pressure he could put on his knee. He found out taking it down the gut. Hey, he found out what kind of pressure Marshall was going to put on his shot. <laughs> Eric Palmer, a sophomore from Bowling Springs, South Carolina, checks into the lineup. That's a great read. As you see, Greg Dennis from Charleston, right around here, is going uh, going to the bench. You know, little Eric Palmer from Bowling Springs. That's a suburb of Spartanburg. You told me earlier in the year, don't say I'm from Bowling Springs. I'm from Spartanburg. No one's heard of Bowling Springs. Well, then we won't tell the fans either that he's about 5'6". The number on his jersey is bigger than he is. Loose ball inside. Possession arrow goes to the herd. Mentioned Greg Dennis stepping out of the ball game momentarily. He's got a large contingent of fans from the Kanawha Valley here to watch him play. 11.56 to go, first half. East Tennessee State leads Marshall by a pair. 11 with just under 12 minutes to go in the first half. And while we've got a moment, we want to remind you that announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by East Tennessee State University. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this game without the written consent of East Tennessee State University and host creative communications is prohibited. Marshall's got the ball, and they're going to face full court pressure defense from the ETSU Bucks. Belfry got a hand on it, but Martin gets it right back to Gross. Banez to Gross. Hurd still trying to get it across the half-court line. Finally, Tyrone Phillips takes care of it. And the turnover. That's the thing about the press. It maybe does not come up with the ball in the back court, but uh, that kind of situation, you get it in the front court or you rush a shot. It's effective. Salford misses that time. Tyrone Phillips with the rebound for the Hurd. Calvin Talford led the Southern Conference in field goal percentage last year, hitting nearly 69% after a slow start. He's rebounded nearly to hit nearly 50% of his shots from the field, but he was short on that one. Ibanez nearly loses the handle. Finds it to Clay. That's a pretty good job of recognition by the uh, freshman from Spain, we might add. He sees a pass across court. Look at this, skip pass all the way underneath. Good recovery right there to save the field goal. Good angle right here. Well, you're going to see a great recovery right here as Marty Story comes over and he gets the foul. If he doesn't foul, it's a layup. Yeah, good foul by Story. If he doesn't commit it, it's an easy bucket. Clay hangs up the first of two. He was really in the doghouse for Coach Dwight Freeman. 
earlier in the season, but this gang that started the game tonight really played well in the second half of Marshall's loss to App State on Saturday. Clay hangs up a pair, and now Rodney English will return for the Bucks, and Marty Story heads for the bench. They were still waiting for the appearance of uh, Mr. Simmons. He's quite a performer, and he's been starting most of the year for uh, Dwight Freeman, but he really hasn't seen any action here tonight. The junior from Houston, Texas, is Marshall's leading scorer, averaging just under 13 points per game, but he's still on the pine. English in traffic, no good. Gross the strong rebound. East Tennessee State, a very aggressive man-to-man. -man. Clay goes down to the baseline and is shut off on the double team. The zone by Marshall has really caused a lot of problems. East Tennessee State, rather see that man. That's not a very good foul by Jerry Pelfrey. Daniels had the angle on him, and Pelfrey reaches in on the jump shooter, and he commits the foul. So Fernando Ibanez will head to the free throw line for a pair. Michael Peck checks in for Tyrone Phillips. Ibanez has a nice soft shot. We're going to see right there, Jerry Pelfrey scrapes him on the right arm, on the shooting arm, and uh, not a real good foul. Uh, he, he was picked off, and his frustration, he came over, and he rubbed him, and uh, I'm sure as Jerry sits down and thinks about that a little bit, uh, Coach wasn't very happy with that foul. Ibanez drains the first of two. He's one of many Marshall freshmen on this club. He played at Fork Union Military Academy with teammates Michael Peck and Matt Houghton. 15-13, the Herds back in front. The zone is doing a very effective job of slowing down the Buccaneers. Nice. The lob, Rodney English with the big throwdown. Nice feed from Eric Palmer. That's one way to get the high percentage shot against the zone, just throw over it. Great <laughs> catch, great pass. Go through, go through. Martin out of control. Palmer stops on a dime and comes up with the basketball. He's quickly into the front court, and he'll put it up. That's where they're most effective. The super defense on one end, as you see, Allen of Force, he has to be happy. The defense creates the turnover, and they finish it in transition. ETSU back in front, 17-15. 9.45 to go, first half. Clay looks inside. Gross. Good ball movement in the marsh. Michael Peck turns on Drake Dennis. Shoot it. If Benyaz lets go with a three. Luke Gross puts it up and in. Offensive boards again. Luke Gross doing open duty on the offensive glass. He's a real space eater inside, and he ties the game. Now Calper guarded aggressively by Michael Peck. Palmer lets go with a three. <laughs> they can score. They can score the three-point shots. They're great at that. You're getting an indication tonight <laughs> why ETSU leads the Southern Conference in three-point attempts. Reason why they got that. Good ball movement. Reverse court. You reverse court, you're going to beat a zone if you do it often enough. Martin off the dribble. No good. Gross tried to keep it alive. And in fact, Marshall will have it under their own bucket. And he's really been a factor in there. And now Gross is going to get a breather. And Sean Brailsford, the sophomore from Miami, and check out the hand for Gross. Harold Simmons now makes his first appearance. Set that bench for almost 12 minutes. This is a starting point guard for Marshall most of the season. And he didn't see any action in the first 12 minutes of the game. Peck steps on the line, and ETSU will get the basketball back. Dwight Freeman's been very, very unhappy with the defensive effort of some of his players, and I think he was sending a message in the beginning of this game to Harold Simmons. Well, You've got to play on both ends. Maybe he was. I tell you what, they're playing this zone very effectively. You don't have to really do a whole lot in the zone except move. And uh, Harold Simmons is the kind of kid I think he'll respond to that uh, leadership from Freeman. A little one, one, three, which goes back in the two, three zone kind of a matchup. English, guarded closely by Peck. And Banez causes the steal. It's a three on two. Peck to the oh. bucket. Good ball, good uh, finger roll. Banez Peck 
They're doing a great job on the defensive end, frustrating a little bit to East Tennessee State. Marshall's aggressive defense in the fast break basket leads the herd back to within a point at 20 to 19. East Tennessee State has got to penetrate those gaps. Silvers misses the three-point shot, but Dennis has the rebound. He draws the foul from Michael Peck. Greg Dennis did a great job that time of keeping the ball alive. Allen, of course, Jeff Lebo, the coaching staff, good job, offensive rebound. And uh, let's see, that's Peck that commits a foul on the jump shot. I, I really believe that East Tennessee State needs to be conscious of the fact they must attack the gaps in that zone defense. Talford returns, and Marty Story takes a breather. Greg Dennis, the senior from Charleston, West Virginia. Missed most of last year with a broken foot. Short arms it a bit and misses. And now Malik Hightower, another of Marshall's normal starting lineup, checks into the game. And Fernando Ibanez gets a seat. Dennis leads this team with 27 blocks. He's a good shooter, good free throw shooter, fine athlete. Welcome back to Huntington. Eric Palmer with the feed, English with the finish. I'll tell you what, though, that's a great pass and a great finish. I believe Greg Dennis creates that because he runs across from right to left. And you know what happens, Dave, when people do that? The defense points on the ball. Look at three-point shooting. East Tennessee State has picked it up a notch or two from the circle. The Buccaneers hitting four of seven. Now Clay across the half-court line. Brailsford to Hightower. Feeds it to Peck. Great Can't block. get it down. Great block, Greg yep. Dennis. Homer. Chalford. Had to adjust his shot, missed it, but he gets his own offensive rebound. The feed to English. We've got a foul inside on Harold Simmons. Good job by Talford just to keep the ball alive. He had to force the shot as he went baseline, but he was able to keep the ball alive on the offensive end and uh, get the attempt at an assist. Team foul number six on East Tennessee State, or rather, East Tennessee State has six team fouls. Marshall has three. That's the first on Harold Simmons. 21-19. Got a reverse court with it. That's it. Reverse court, attack the scene. It. Silvers, Palmer, Talford. And Marshall's defense shifting well. But good ball movement by East Tennessee State. Talford has it stripped by Malik Hightower. Takes it right to Palmer. Got it. Job by the freshman player of the year, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Great athlete, Malik Hightower. Averaging over 12 points a game for the Marshall Thundering Herd. And once again, we're all knotted up at 21, 6.40 to go. And another steal. Clay. Hightower to follow. You've got to keep after those. They will miss those layups once in a while. Tell you what, yes, the Buccaneers are kind of loafing in that transition. And now this Henderson Center crowd begins to make some noise. East Tennessee State looking for the equalizer. Nice. English with the big follow. That'll answer the crowd. That'll sit him down in a big hurry. <laughs> We're tied again at 23. Heck, takes it to Dennis. No good. Not a good shot. Got to take time off the clock. Got to take time off the clock in transition like that. They didn't have the numbers. And if they're going to maintain the lead, they're heavily underdogs here. They've got to take more time off the clock before they shoot. Reese Dudley checks in for East Tennessee State as Silvers takes a seat. Clay. Brailsford. Gross is being guarded inside by English. Simmons can't get it down, but Eric Clay chases down the offensive rebound for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Nice Railsford inside. Loses the handle, but Gross is right there. That was created because it was a great pass inside, and the help came, and that left the big man loose throws open for the uh, follow-up. Palmer to Dudley. Reese. Now we've got a foul on Sean Brailsford as he pushed Greg Dennis from behind. 
whoever says you don't foul when you play zone. You're going to see right now, that's a pretty good look. Oh, Greg takes the ball to the hole. I'll tell you something about uh, Greg Dennis. The scouts really like the way he does put the ball on the floor. You know, a lot of a lot of talk right now about his NBA prospects, Dave. We saw the paper today out of Charleston, and uh, the only thing that's negative about his game right now, or the most conspicuous thing, is his lack of weight. Robert Spears checks in. He's big, and he's from Big Stone Gap, Virginia, as Greg Dennis takes a seat. Greg Dennis would like to add some weight. He just can't do it. I wish we all had that problem. <laughs> I tell you, I tell him, I can tell him some things. <laughs> East Tennessee State now has committed their seventh team foul, and the herd goes into the bonus. I tell you, I'm really uh, impressed, is the word, at how the uh, Marshall Thundering Herd is doing a great job of cutting off those passing lanes. Frank Martin steps to the line for the one and one. Tough luck shot on the front end of the one and one. Reese Dudley at 5'10 comes down with a rebound. Calvin Talford swings it inside. Here comes Frank Martin ahead to Harold Simmons. Nearly loses his footing and pulls it back outside. That's a smart decision by the junior from Houston. That's the leadership role of Harold Simmons. There's that jump hook by Luke Rose. Can't get it down. Talford with a strong rebound. He's a force inside for East Tennessee State. Talford with a three on the way. His third three-pointer of the first half. You notice how Calvin Talford maybe has moved a little farther away and got the better angle at the bucket, playing in what we call a true position uh, on the perimeter. Nearly coming up with the steal is Reese Dudley, but the herd will retain possession. Ron, Calvin Talford, he really line drives those three-pointers. Not much margin for error. I tell you what, though, if he can drain it, you don't really worry about it. A lot of people have told him, you need a little more arc on the ball, but, you know, his success is very good, so you don't, you don't concern yourself as a coach about how it looks. Good defense by Rodney English has pushed Brailford nearly 20 feet away from the basket. Coming up with the steal is Niblett all the way to the hole. No good. Spears chases it down. Boy, for East Tennessee State, good things come in small packages. They've really got their kitty core out there. Talford again. They got a reverse court. They got to really do that. Calvin Talford is a streak shooter, and most of the time he's in the good streak. They need to work the ball around, reverse court, get it into his hands. He's got the hot one right now. Dudley has really given you a lift since coming off the bench. Talford keeps it alive. Excellent play to Spears. See if they get the ball in Talford's hand. If they don't get the ball in Talford's hand, there's something wrong with the cycle. Nearly another turnover. East Tennessee State will keep it, and the fans don't like that. 328 to go. First half. East Tennessee State leads it 29-25. East Tennessee State leads Marshall by four. Dave Weekly and Ron Bishop at the Henderson Center. And Rodney English finds out when you hang around the basket, good things happen. Hey, well, he uh, he's hanging around all right. That was a great uh, drop step. But look at this. Calvin Talford has made his last four three-pointers. I'm telling you, they got to get the ball in the man's hand. He's got a hop. He's red hot. Inside out. That's a pretty good play. There he is. Talford goes about two feet in the air to get that ball. Three on the way. No good. And we've got a foul inside on Robert Spears. Next game along most of these stations, ETSU heads down on Tobacco Road to take on NC State, the Wolfpack. As the Bucks go up against Les Robinson, Alan LaForce and company handed one to the Wolfpack last season. That was a great game. It's going to be a good one again. Alan LaForce, assistant coach on Les Robinson. They'll be going head-to-head -head next week. And we'd like to welcome WJHL, Johnson City, Tennessee, tuning in tonight. The flagship station of the East Tennessee State Buccaneer Sports Network. <laughs> Look at Dwight. What you laughing at, Coach? I'll tell you what. He has not had a whole lot to laugh about lately. 
<laughs> no, he sure hasn't. <laughs> but he's got his team playing aggressively tonight. Also like to welcome all our viewers watching on Sports South as John Brailsford hangs up a pair. 29-27. I'll tell you why he was laughing. Brailsford's only hitting 26% from the free throw line on the season. <laughs> That's cause for laughter when you can down two with that percentage. Dalford had it in three-point range, and that's been deadly tonight for the Bucks. English. Need to look to get the ball into the middle. There's that. Well, that's okay. Middle of the cylinder. I forgot who had the ball. Are well, they going to call out a two, as you see, Allen, the fourth? He's trying to get his defense, move up, put pressure on the ball in the backcourt. Reese Dudley all over Frank Martin. High tower just beats Dalford to the ball. And now East Tennessee State is making every pass very difficult for Marshall and their young team. Brailsford loses the handle momentarily. The Knights nice lead to Hightower. Fast patience by Marshall. Exactly. Got to be impressed with the way they, they've really played patiently on the offensive end. Uh, a little double team right there, and someone forgot to cover into the middle. Dudley for three. No good. Hightower goes high for the rebound, but English gets it. Can't get it down. Fighting inside. Still loose, and now we've got a foul. Well, there's a lot of discussion going on. And the thing you don't want to get is in too much discussion with Luke Gross. I'm telling you that wide body, he gets frustrated. You're going to see right here a lot of action underneath. Pretty good offensive glass there, but Rodney English won't fall. Good battle. Luke, Luke fouls his own man. He's trying to put the shoulder into his own man, Brailsford. Ron, I like how you describe that as discussion. <laughs> I had uh, the Southern Conference All-Star team in Costa Rica this summer. We had Luke Gross and Harold Simmons playing with two East Tennessee State players, Rodney English and Jerry Pelfrey. And I, I'll tell you, Jerry Pelfrey and Rodney English have to be impressed with the improvement of Luke Gross. He didn't play a whole lot of minutes down in Costa Rica, and he certainly didn't score very much. Reese Dudley, the freshman from Darlington, hangs up the first of two. East Tennessee State has really cornered the market on guards under six feet tall. Last year they had Major Gear and Mr. Jennings. Hang up another one for Dudley. It's 33-29. Speaking of little guard, Damian Hodge comes into the ball game, and I'll tell you, Dave, this kid is going to be a great one. Super athlete, Damian Hodge. East Tennessee State has five players on their roster under six feet tall. Frank Martin gets some light. -like. He's deadly. Give him that much room, he can train him. Damian Hodge from Franklin, Tennessee. The story has to be the way the matchup zone has created problems for the Buccaneers. Dalford goes baseline. Oh, Whoa. that shot is a highlight shot. I don't see how he got it off. Hey, he was under the goal and somehow got a reverse layup. It's unbelievable. Great penetration by Calvin Talbot. Look here. His shot is unbelievable, and he sinks it. He's foul. He's got another gear that the other players <laughs> don't have. Watch him go baseline again, Ron. Oh, that's a super move, but look at this. Hang time, brings it down around his hip, throws it up. What a great shot by a super athlete. Calvin Talfer completes the three-point play. It's a four-point lead again, 36-32. We've got 90 seconds to go in the first half. Brailsford has it on the block, double team. Here comes Gross Luke. down the lane. Oh, oh. Luke Gross playing like a penetrating point guard. And drives all the way to hope. Someone on a defensive end has got to step in there and pick up the charge on Luke Gross. Niblett off the baseline. That's easier said than done. Who wants to step in front of Luke Gross when he's going that fast down the lane? Oh, he's a big one. Brailsford turns on the block. Nice drop step, puts it up and in. Well, the inside game of Dwight Freeman is really clicking here tonight in Huntington. Marshall continues to hang around. They trail by a point. Alper. Can't get the roll on the three. Wilson can't control it. Simmons has got it. Shot clock is off. High tower. Did he get up? He got up against one of the premier leapers in the league. 
Malik Hightower, the freshman from Pittsburgh, hangs on the rail, hurts his hand, but he's going up right now. He's going up against the big man, the jumper, two leapers going against each other. Malik Hightower against Calvin Talbot. Talbot and Hightower, the high wire act of the bucket. That alone is worth the price of admission. Wesley Cornish checks into the lineup, and Luke Gross gets a big hand on the Marshall bench. Reese Dudley returns for East Tennessee State. Calvert Talford steps out as he picks up his second foul. He's probably done for the first half. And that's exactly the reason he is going out. With only 35 seconds, you don't risk a player like Calvin Talford picking up that third foul in the last 35 seconds. High tower with another. 35 seconds to go, first half, we're tied at 38. Reminiscent of last year. This is where they picked up last year. The big up, upset when Marshall behind John Tapp upset the 13th ranked Buccaneers. Remember last year, Dave, this looks like it could be a follow-up on that game. All right. And Niblett and Reese Dudley play that. Now we're down to 10 seconds in the first half. You miss a towel for shooting out there, though. The three is long. And we've got a foul with one, no, no foul, but East Tennessee State will retain possession with one second. A lot of confusion over there in that corner, and uh, unfortunately for Buccaneer fans, the referee was, uh, with all the confusion, was having it uh, right in front of the Marshall bench. But look who's in the game now. Calvin Talford with only one second. They'd love to get it to him for a three. Well, you know he's got maybe look for the maybe or look for the run. Yeah, the dunk. That is going to do it for the first half. Heavy underdog Marshall heads back to their locker room. Alan LaForce and ECSU back to their respective bench. We're tied. 38 all. We'll be back with some halftime activities from the Henderson Center in a moment. In Huntington tonight, the Marshall Thundering Herd and the East Tennessee State Buccaneers were all tied at 38. Let's check our halftime stats, Ron. Well, they're all knotted in the field goal, 42% each. Free throws, East Tennessee State. Uh, neither team's been there very often, but look at this. Marshall, surprisingly, 20 rebounds, and 10 of those, half of them, are offensive boards. And, of course, East Tennessee State only 4-6 turnovers, the team that turned it over a lot. East Tennessee State shooting 55% uh, from three-point circle, and that really is the thing that's kept them in the game's first half. Dennis inside. No good. Fight for the rebound. It Benyev pulls it down for Marshall. Here comes the herd with a chance oh. to take the lead. Railsford. Well, what a way to start the first few minutes of the second half. Greg Dennis really struggling, has not, to this point, got a field goal. Niblett to Dennis. Talford. Three-point land. Can't get it down. Offensive rebound by Greg Dennis, and he's fouled. Talford didn't miss too many threes in the first half. He was four of six from beyond the arc in the first 20. Dwight Freeman directing traffic right there. Pretty good shot by Talford. He, he spots up pretty good. Just couldn't get it to fall. The fight for the offensive board. Greg Dennis comes up with it, and he's fouled. English, Niblett, Talfer. They quickly move the basketball around. Boy, that's the kind of turnover that really hurts. When you get good ball movement like that, it's really distressing to a coach when you get a three-second call against the zone when you're trying to move the ball across court. Tenth turnover of the night for the Buccaneers of Allen LaForce. Now Marshall will try to add to their two-point lead. Fernando Abanez goes right to the bucket. Scoring. Offensive foul. Bucket will count. Count it. Dave, it does count. The thing that's really interesting, someone needs to step forward. He dribbled too far from the wing. You're going to see him take, and there's the charge. But if you're going to take that charge, you need to come out on the block and pick it up before he releases the ball. Chazelle so Silvers takes the charge. Silvers has it now. The feet inside the table. He goes down to Dennis. 
nicely done, and they've got Eric Clay on the foul. Good ball movement by East Tennessee State. I like the way they're attacking this zone now. They're going from point to wing, back into the post, but you're going to see a great dump-down pass by Dennis and the foul, but they created that by getting the ball into the middle of that zone and then uh, passing to Dennis underneath. Greg Dennis with the first half without a field goal, just one point. That's got to be one of the stories of the game. And that plus the fact that uh, Marshall University is getting such great inside play from people like Luke Gross. Greg Dennis, when he came out of Charleston High in West Virginia, thought about attending Marshall. But the Thundering Herd coaching staff wanted him to go to prep school. So Dennis headed south, and he's had an outstanding career at East Tennessee State. Full court pressure defense by the Bucks. Little 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. Doesn't create a lot of problems. Been impressed with the way Marshall's handled that pressure in backcourt. Banez fakes the shot. Frank Martin looking over the defense. East Tennessee State aggressive on the defensive end. Niblet down into the break, into the good position to try to stop Martin, who goes right to the bucket. No good. Dennis pulls down the rebound. Niblet quickly. Swing it. Talford plays right on him. Baseline. Nice skip. Look pass. away pass. Talford for three. That's a great pass. She didn't like it very much, but that's a great skip pass from Greg Dennis to Calvin Talford, spotted up behind the three-point circle. Talford now with five three-point goals in the game. East Tennessee State regains the lead, 43-42. Just under 18 minutes to go in Huntington. Ibanez. And they've got Talford on the foul. <laughs> that's his third. And Alan LaForce doesn't like it. Well, you're going to see why Alan LaForce does not like it. You just don't reach like that on a kid who's shooting. Marshall has really not played this far like a team that's on a long losing streak. And they've really been surprising the way they've played. But the thing that's going to be interesting, Dave, down the stretch is to see if they've got the confidence to carry it through to the end. Talford with three personal fouls. Ron, you mentioned Marshall University and their troubles. They came into tonight's game 3-13. and 13. They've lost 10 straight. They're 0-4 in the league. In fact, they've only got one win over a Division I club this season. And Talford, with a serious lapse, loses the basketball out of bounds. He was uncontested for the rebound. Now, Calvin tried to put it away. He had, the, had one hand on it, and his knee came up. He's so athletic. You credit that with just because you're a great athlete. He, he should have corralled it, though. Ibanez with one of two free throws. We're tied at 43. Now you see East Tennessee State in a little zone of its own, a little 2-1-2. Two, two. Boy, Greg Dennis in the middle of that zone. Nearly had the steal. Brailsford chases it down. Dennis, what a middleman at 6-11. Marshall's coming up right now with all the loose balls. Look at Dennis in the middle of that zone, surrounded by smaller players. Looks sort of like a pup tent. Frank Martin can't connect on the three. Silvers with the rebound. Niblet to the bucket. High arcing shot that goes off last for Jason Niblet. Great shot over Luke Gross. I thought for a second he was going to pick up the charge, but it's hard to pick up a charge when you're Niblet going against Gross. Ibanez lets fly with a three. It's an air ball. English all over the rebound. Ahead to Silver, spinning into traffic. Tough luck shot. No good. Gross, rather, Ibanez with the rebound. Frank Mark tells his teammates to slow down and set it up. East Tennessee State, 45, Marshall, 43, 16, 20 to go. You notice one thing, this zone's doing it, pulling Gross. Now he goes, but Gross has been out high, and that'll take him away from the offensive boards. Ibanez for three. Gross had a hand on it, couldn't hold it. Rodney English with the rebound for the Buccaneers. Talford for three. Clay chases down the rebound. That's a good shot. That's the man you want to take the shot. 
you're not going to complain about that. He had the shot he wanted in transition. He just couldn't get it to fall. Once again, Marshall can tie it up on this trip. East Tennessee State remaining in their zone. Coach LaForce said that zone looked pretty good to me in the first half. You guys, Marshall did such a great job. Let's see if it'll work for us. Clay takes it down to the baseline. Good defense by Talford, and he got some help from Rodney English. Now Martin with a long three-pointer. That was an NBA-style three. Clay tips it in, going up over the top of Silvers for the basket. One thing a long shot like that does, Dave, it creates more opportunities for offensive rebounds. Niblett. Running the show up top for East Tennessee State. Ibanez forces him out 40 feet from the bucket and he flirts and he throws it away. 15.02 to go. Marshall's fans come to their feet tied at 45. To center at Huntington where East Tennessee State and Marshall all tied at 45. Our next television game along most of these same stations, ETSU, the Buccaneers, travel down Tobacco Road to take on Les Robinson and the NC State Wolfpack. The ETSU Bucks have revenge on their minds. We hope you join us then. Field goal percentage. First half, even. Second half, both teams are down. ETSU hitting one-third of their shots from the field. Railsford to Clay. Simmons fakes a shot over to Mark, started closely by Pelfrey. ETSU in that zone really getting into the passing lanes, Ron, making it very difficult on the herd to get a clear shot. Simmons oh, with the long shot. Gross trying to jam home the offensive rebound. Couldn't do it. Might have got away with one right there, too. I thought the ball might have been out of bounds off Niblett, but uh, East Tennessee State's going to get that call. Luke Gross continues to impress the way he's just really dogging the board tonight on the offensive end. Belfry looks inside. Back to Niblett. Pelfrey for three. Got it. And Jerry Pelfrey in the game. That's the kind of thing that's a confidence builder. He hits his first shot like that. He's very dangerous. Jerry Pelfrey from Paintsville, Kentucky with a three-point shot. It's 48-45. Both teams now in zone defenses. Jerry, he chartered the shoot from long range. Frank Martin puts up the shot. It's a two-pointer. Good. And Marco likes it. The mascot of the Marshall Thundering Herd. Belfry. Good to English. ETSU swinging the ball very well. Nice speed to Dennis in the lane. Tough luck shot off the back of the board. Ball still loose. Railsford comes up with it for Marshall. Frank Martin sets it up for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Eric Clay, the senior from Detroit, got a start tonight. Simmons with a nice save right in front of the Marshall bench. He goes sprawling into the pine. Talford all over Harold Simmons outside. Good hustle by Jason Niblett, but Marshall controls the ball and retains possession. Martin, no good. Dennis, the strong rebound. Ahead of the pack, Talford. English nearly had it. Frank Martin stripped it away, and East Tennessee State will keep possession. Calvin Talford trying to back pass the ball to Rodney English. I think maybe if he catches the ball, he might put more pressure on the defense by just taking it to the hole. Belfry kicks it into Jason Niblett, and it will start all over again. England in traffic and airborne oh. gets his own rebound. Kick sinks the jam and Clay's got it. Rodney English getting frustrated inside. You're exactly right. Almost like a pass to himself. He just pulls oh, and he comes back on the other end, makes the block, and talks a little trash to Harold Simmons. I guess you could say he took out his frustrations <laughs> in a big way. Those kids were they used to see Dwight Freeman. He wants a little time out here. Talk about this. <laughs> 12.33 to go. 48-47. East Tennessee State by a point. Leads it by a point. And look what happens when Jason Niblett gets into the open court. Oh, he froze right there, Martin, on defense, and then takes it right to the big man, Luke Rose, and shoots it in his face. But look at this. This is a story. Greg Dennis has not scored from the field three of four from the free throw line. 
So it's been a disappointing homecoming for the senior from Charleston, West Virginia. But East Tennessee State continues to lead. Ron, we've had a great game tonight. Full of lead changes. Three-point goals. Full court pressure defense. Luke Gross in the paint with the jump hook. And Marshall regains the lead. Well, the one thing that East Tennessee State has not done that Marshall has, they've gotten it into the hands of the big men down low against the zone. Pelfrey can't sink it, but he draws the foul. And Jason Pelfrey, or Jerry Pelfrey rather, has given East Tennessee State a lift off the bench. Right Freeman a little concerned, as you're going to see right here. Good ball movement by uh, Pelfrey. He puts the ball on the floor very well. He gets, shot, he gets fouled on the field goal attempt. First to two, good. Jerry Pelfrey, excellent free throw shoot. One. We're tied again at 49. As the lead continues to swing back and forth. Back iron, no good. Rebound, Brailsford. Sean Brailsford playing inside for the herd with four personal fouls. East Tennessee State remains in their zone. Luke Gross, he's been a force, comes out top. Like the patience of Marshall. Shot clock down to 15 for Marshall. Trying to get there to do it as they try to get it inside. But look at Luke Gross kick it out. Seven on the shot clock. Harold Simmons doesn't realize the shot clock is running down. Throws one up. And Greg Dennis has it for the Bucks. Niblet. Nice pass. To England. Can't get it down. Tough luck shot. How many of those misses? They'd love to have those back. Several misses underneath the bucket. Harold Simmons, the three-pointer for Marshall. Harold Simmons the told himself of that, not realizing how much time on the shot clock by draining a three in front of Marshall team. Talford feeds it inside, stolen by Frank Martin. He loses the handle. That was a lucky break for the Bucks. Marshall was coming back three on one. The thing that they're really doing is they're making East Tennessee State play a lot Frank Martin misses for Marshall. There's one thing harder than playing good defense is playing that sustained defense, and Marshall's shown a lot of patience just kind of taking time off the clock. East Tennessee State, the Bucks, the leaders in the Southern Conference, trailing on the road to Marshall. Wholesale substitutions, Marty Story comes into the game. Giselle Silver is also into the action. Greg Dennis and Rodney English take a seat. John Brailsford exits momentarily for Marshall. Good moves by both coaches. Brailsford with four fouls. And Rodney English and Greg Dennis, I think, maybe a little frustrated. Allen the force, good move to give them a break. Tyrone Phillips into the lineup. His first game back. Long shot off the back iron. Calf with the rebound to follow. No good. Luke Gross, the strong rebound for Marshall. Here they come, three on two. Martin, oh. Simmons. Great penetration by Martin in transition. Spot Simmons, and right now Marshall is playing with a lot of confidence. East Tennessee State must talk about it. Alan LaForce wants a timeout. The Bucks find themselves down by five, 54 to 49. Marshall University has surged into a lead to play of Frank Martin in transition, draws the defense, and then dishes off to Harold Simmons, who drains it. And Dave, that's five points on two trips down the floor for Harold Simmons. Turnovers tell the story, Ron. ETSU, the Bucks at 13. Marshall averaging nearly 20 turnovers a game, just seven with 9.50 to go in the game. And a key thought, they have not turned the ball over since the half break. Ten minutes without a turnover for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Eric Palmer, who was a spark plug for the Bucks in the first half, has checked back into the game, and now they've got Harold Simmons on the foul. Not a very smart foul right there because he's guarding Eric Palmer. Dwight Freeman doesn't like it a whole lot, but Eric Palmer at 5'6 is so far away, and Harold Simmons just fouls him in open court. Rodney English checks back into the Bucks lineup. 
Marty Story takes a seat on the Bucks bench. Marshall with five team fouls now. The Bucks have committed only one here in the second half. You get that ball in the middle at the free throw line, you've got to look to the opposite side of the court. You've got to reverse court. That man's always going to be open. English goes baseline. Gets it back. Marshall's done an excellent job tonight on Rodney English. Belfry for three. Rattles it home. It's a two-point game. Well, Nate, I tell you, the best way to beat a zone, penetrate the gaps, reverse court with the ball. Always the weakest part of the floor for the defense to cover is the opposite side. Marshall patiently working the basketball around the East Tennessee State Bucks zone. Harold Simmons fakes the shot. Back out top to Frank Martin. Down to 20 on the shot clock. Marshall's done a nice job tonight, Ron, of running the clock down. Simmons fakes the shot, dumps it into Ty Phillips. Stolen. Rodney English with the basketball for the Bucks. Over to Eric Palmer. Bucks playing pretty good defense. They need to take advantage right now of these turnovers that they're creating, uh, or at least this turnover, and uh, get, get a bucket out of it. The Bucks can tie this game with a bucket. Palmer in among the trees. Pelfrey with a three on the way. Strong rebound inside. No good. Salford. Yes. Oh. Can't get it, but he'll go to the line. Calvin Salford, outstanding offensive rebound. That time on that particular trip the bucks really crashed the board well it was a super job all the way around i like the way they got the ball in the middle of the court and they did reverse it over to jerry pelfrey that was a great shot jerry pelfrey made and rodney english to an open duty with talford on the offensive board michael peck makes his first appearance for marshall in the second half tyrone phillips will take a seat calvin talford he's having a great night 17 points in the first half 20 for the game too strong on the free throw. Looked like he rushed it, Ron. But Dave, what, what did it? What did uh, we talk about uh, when we talked with Allen before? There's going to be nights when this offense is not going to always be there. And really, the Bucks have really struggled offensively. But uh, again, they're in the game and they're going down the, the stretch against a team that's really struggled when the game was on the line. Inside of eight minutes, play for three. Can't get it down. Rodney English may be suffering at the offensive end, but his defense has been excellent. Talford, baseline, no good. Peck had the rebound, loses it inside. Good job by Silvers to keep the ball alive on the miss. Rodney English almost overjumped because say, he was going to slam that thing, but it got over the rim. Silvers kept it alive and he's fouled. Watch English. I tell you, he almost gets up there, but Silver's reaching in, keeps it alive. The fans wanted a foul. Giselle Silver steps to the free throw line. Two points tonight. Hits the first. What an excellent job he did for the Bucks last season when Calvin Talford went out with a knee injury. I like Silvers. I like the way he plays. I'll tell you something else he can play. He can play those video games. You ought to see him in the lobby. You ought to see him in the hotel lobby. He's playing those video games. He's an excellent, and he was schooled by no more than Calvin Talford. The Bucks now have the lead. Well, he goes to the offensive board and gobbles him up just like Pac-Man. 55-54. The Bucks have the lead at the 7:30 mark. Pac in the paint, double team. Frank Martin to Harold Simmons. No good. They've got Jerry Pelfrey on the push-off inside. So I'd like to see that. That might be a little cheapening right there, but I'm impressed with the way the Bucks. Let's just see right here the shot by Simmons from the perimeter. Let's see if Jerry gets fouled. I don't know. I didn't see that, but you know the thing is really good. Alan LaForce didn't see it either, but the one that counted the men in stripes. 7.15 to go. East Tennessee State by a point. Clay with a nice fake. Martin, three on the way. No good. English the rebound. Here they come, four on two. Talford goes high for the basketball. What a great save by Calvin Talford. Good decision right there by the Buccaneers to use a little clock, get the shot they want. They didn't get the transition button. Now they're going to take some time. English for three. Too strong. 
Ball's loose inside. He's got up no good. Pelfrey's in the paint. He's got it, and he's fouled by Harold Simmons. Kind of like the way right now East Tennessee State is going to the glass. They're getting more than one shot, and they're doing really a good job watching cheerleaders urging on. But look at all the loose balls right now going Buccaneers way, and they're getting more than one chance at the bucket. Silver's fighting inside. Little reach in right there by Harold Simmons. So Jerry Pelfrey has done a good job for the Bucks in this second half as his own buster goes to the line. Fernando Ibanez checks in and Michael Peck leaves the lineup. It'll be interesting to see at what point Brelsford, who I thought was playing very well, he's going to have four fouls. Uh, be very interesting to see how long Dwight Freeman chooses to leave him on the bench with 6.39 to go, but they might want to come back with him pretty quickly. Let's get another look at Jerry Pelfrey's textbook look from the free throw line. Two that got nothing but the net. 57-54, East Tennessee State leading the Marshall Thundering Herd by three. Six and a half minutes to go from the Henderson Center in Huntington. East Tennessee State with that small lineup, and it's been very good for them in the last few trips down, especially on the offensive end. East Tennessee State comes up with another turnover, trying uh -oh. to add to their 8-0 run, and Alfred is fouled by Frank Norton. Crowd did like it. You gotta like it though if you're a Marshall fan because if he doesn't foul, Calvin's gonna jam. That's a pretty good foul by the sophomore. Let's see the reach in right there. Good call. The officials uh, right on top of the play called that on the reach in. Malik Hightower checks into the lineup. 6.18 to go. East Tennessee State looking to add to an 8-0 run, leading Marshall 57-54. The Bucks leading Marshall 57-54, 6.18 to go. Calvin Talford will be at the free throw line when play resumes. Look at the herd from three-point land, Ron. <laughs> Only one of 12, but uh, look at East Tennessee State, three of eight. I think second half, and the, the one that Marshall hit was a big one by Simmons. Salford converts. Like the, the Bucks have scored nine consecutive points. Like the way, I think the reason they've done that. Look at Calvin Calvert, 22 tonight. That's pretty good. That's pretty good uh, play by uh, the senior. But the Bucks have done it because they've really been after it on the offensive boards, and they've attacked the zone a little better in the second half. Frank Martin into the paint area, puts it up, gets the roll. That is the drop for Marshall. It's 59-56. Pelfrey eyes the three, then thinks better of it. Eric Palmer running the show now, guarded closely by Frank Martin. Belfry drawing a lot of attention outside the arc. Calford for an NBA-style three. <laughs> His sixth of the night. That's where he wants to play. He showed right there he can shoot the perimeter shot. What a great athlete. As he's not only scored a lot of points, he's gotten a lot of second-half rebounds. That's a big basket for the Bucks. A six-point lead, the biggest of the night for East Tennessee State. If Banez eyes the goal. Good activity by the defense, really covering, but look at that NBA shot. Frank Martin with the long shot. Silvers has the rebound for East Tennessee State. Almost too long. That shot was really not a good shot in that situation. Counting down to the five-minute mark. That's the kind of thing that happens to teams when they're all in losing streak. Somehow they find ways to lose. And with those kind of shots, like Silvers off the baseline for the Bucks. It's an eight-point lead. That's the biggest by either team. Marshall. White Freeman not very happy about it. They need a timeout. They need to talk about this because they've really got some problems now on at home down to 4.30. Play, high tower. Good double team by the Bucks. This zone defense by the Bucs has really taken loose pressure out of the offense until now. <laughs> he called his number, and he gets the jam. That's 
a little better patience. The last stretch of five minutes after playing so well in the first half, Marshall did not take too many good shots down the floor on the last uh, five minutes. The Bucks by six, and they've got the basketball. Under four minutes now. Belfry guarded by Clay. Like the confidence, like the uh, experience of the Buccaneers in these situations. Taking time, ball movement, working clock, making a defense move. The shot clock is down to seven. Palmer in traffic. Nice to oh. the Silvers, he's got it. Oh boy, that's the way you beat that zone defense. Penetration by the little 5-6 guard and the dunk for the assist. And what a way to operate the shot clock. The Bucks used all 45 and Silvers finished with the short shot. 3.15 to go, the Bucks by eight, 66-58. Martin on the move, count it! Oh, that was almost like a continuation. <laughs> That's a big foul right there too, Calvin Talbot, no doubt about the foul, but the bucket goes in. Allen LaForce has to be concerned, it's 3.10 left in the game. You're going to see another look right there to step in on the penetration of the gap. And that's a foul. And that's his fourth foul going down the stretch the last three minutes. Jason Dublin into the game. Eric Palmer, who did an excellent job running the show for the Bucks, will take a seat. Calvin Talford with four personal fouls now. Frank Martin will try to finish off the three-point play. He's got a dozen points for Marshall tonight. It'll be interesting to see if Marshall goes to some kind of pressure defense. I think they're going to have to start looking to play a little man-to-man, -man perhaps, because with only three minutes, they've got to make up five points. 66-61, the Bucks lead it by five. Marshall trying to turn their defense up a notch. The Bucks going to run the shot clock down and get a good attempt at the bucket. Baseline, Silvers, no good. English can't follow. English has got it again. Ball on the court. They've got English on the travel. And Allen, the force is hot. A lot of hands reaching in. Rodney English might have gotten a foul, but uh, the referee calls a turnover. And there's a good discussion going on right there on the sideline. And Allen seems to do most of the talk. 2.43. Grafton Young huddling up behind said, hey, coach, coach, don't get the tee right here, coach. Grafton Young, the assistant, along with Jeff Lethal, John Schulman. Play to Martin. Eyes a 25-footer, then gets it back to Clay, the senior from Detroit. Speaking of big trips, this is the big one. We're down to 2.15 in the game. Play. Hightower. The Bucks defense is doing a job. Down to 205. Eight to go in the shot clock. And they're going to whistle Rodney English on the foul. Got to be careful with Salford out there with four fouls. Good penetration by Martin. Look at this. Maybe gets away with a foul right here. I don't know. Could have been called a push off. My mistake. It's not English. It's Talford. And he's out of the game. That's big right there. That's big because look at the points. 26 points. Three minutes. Uh, and, uh, what? 10 seconds. He picked up his fourth. And very quickly, another minute. And he picks up his fifth. So Greg Dennis checks in to replace Talford. Got a fresh 45 seconds with that foul also. Under two minutes now. Marshall with the ball, but the Bucks have a five-point lead. Not a bad player to be coming in the game and Greg Dennis at 6'11", especially when they're playing this zone. Rodney English nearly came up with the turnover. The coaches really earning their pay now, huh? <laughs> I like those coaches. I love them. Pressure's on. Alan LaForce, what a great job he did taking over this program a year ago for Les Robinson. He's really established himself in this league. Good. Nice job. Oh, fuck. Nothing. Nothing. You know, really, Dave, it's kind of surprising we haven't seen more of Hightower. He got eight points, was perfect from the field, perfect from the free throw line in the first half in only about eight minutes. You're going to see the freshman right there on the drive 
Got to take the, take away the baseline. The freshman from Pittsburgh's doing a pretty good job for White Freeman. That was just the fifth team foul most for of, the Bucks, and most of them were, must have been on English or Talbot rather. High tower, great High block five. by English. Super block by a six-four senior. I don't Martin. think Gross ever saw him. I don't think he did. That was a jump hook, too. I mean, look at him go up right here. A little jump hook, and Rodney English pats it away. you got to remember Luke Gross is 6'9". Bucks have got the ball and a five-point lead. They better use all 44 seconds anyway before they get a shot off. Marshall's next foul will be their 10th. And they're going to whistle Malik Hightower on the personal and tell free. Deadly at the free throw line. Goes to the line for two. Alan LaForce giving Jason Niblett an earful. we push right here. Jerry Pelfi almost steps on the circle there on the line. Oops, maybe did, but he was pushed. Official calls the push, and that caused Pelfrey to step on the line. Pelfrey trying to get into double figures tonight. Jerry Pelfrey has really done a great job off the bench. Didn't really get that many minutes in the first half. Second half, he has really played well. Pelfrey, I'm just sitting there. You see that? There's no waving in the arms. They think they got to learn something from Cameron indoor. Down to a minute 10, 67-61. Marshall really needs a pair of three-pointers. You got to put it up. Frank Martin with a line drive that bangs off the board. Niblett's got it, and now it's a game to chase him down. Well, that was a frustration shot right there. If you're going to shoot that three-pointer, you got to shoot it quickly, but you got to shoot it within range. That was just too far out, and you're going to see right now. Let's see if we can pick it up. We got Niblett. We got the foul right there, but you know what's amazing is that good teams playing on the road, with experience like East Tennessee State somehow rises to the occasion. On the other hand, a Marshall team, as fans begin to file out of here, which is unusual uh, if you follow this program over the years, but Marshall on this losing streak, not able to sustain it down the end with that composure and that confidence to put it away. I think you hit it right on the head. Marshall has just so many young players that they've been really having a problem executing at crunch time. That does it right there. Rodney English with a big offensive rebound. Niblett will go back to the free throw line, whistle the foul on Frank Martin. That's a great rebound by Rodney English. They come out of there with that. Now they kill the clock. And with a seven-point lead, it's almost gone. So Niblett will go back to the free throw line. Fernando Ibanez finds a seat on the bench. Started his first career game at Marshall tonight. Niblett, the junior college transfer from Martinsville, Virginia. I really like the way Marshall played with a lot of confidence in the first probably, uh, you know, like uh, 25 minutes. But you got to give a lot of credit to Allen the Force. I thought they made some good adjustments. They attacked that zone pretty good in the second half with the uh, big man at the post and uh, reverse ball. They did a super job with that. And, and uh, that's going to get them the win. 50 seconds to go. Hightower with a three. Short. Niblett had it. Ball is loose. And Rodney English and Niblett can't control it. Allen on the sideline. Rooting for the clock. Talking to his coaching staff. Rooting for the clock. Saying we've got to get out of here with this W. Get back home, play some games. 70 to 61. 46 seconds to go. Dave, their next game, Marshall, against Appalachian State Saturday at home. That'll be a big one. Off the iron, no good. Hightower, the follow. Oh, boy. <laughs> he is a good-looking player. Malik Hightower, very athletic freshman. Rodney says, who, me? <laughs> Rodney, you were the only one near the man. Who, me? Bumped him right there, challenged his shot. I don't really know if he uh, fouled him. Probably bumped him before, but uh, I like the way Rodney said, who, me? He's the only player within five feet of the shooter. Hightower with the first of two. It's 70 to 62. Big week coming up for the Bucks at home in Johnson City against App State, then traveling down Tobacco Road to take on NC State. 
Hightower with the second. Hangs up a pair. That'll be pressing right here. 38 seconds to go. It's a seven-point game. That's good. Now it's going to be a free throw contest the last 30 seconds. 36 seconds left in the game, and the Tennessee State is going to be shooting free throws down the end. These two teams will have their rematch in Johnson City on February 22nd. Niblett's getting a lot of work from the charity stripe in the last 30 seconds. He's played pretty solid game in the second half, too. Jerry Pelfrey, probably the best half of basketball I've seen him play this year. And, of course, uh, I think English has played well. Talford before he fouled out with all those points, 25 points on the night. Greg Dennis probably would love to start this game all over again. i got to tell you, Ron, if you would have told me before the game that East Tennessee State, the Bucks were going to win this game without Greg Dennis scoring a field goal, I would have told you you're nuts. Yeah, exactly. The only thing I would say to that is they just really got a lot of arsenal, a lot of players. Calvin Talford had an outstanding game tonight before fouling out with 26 points. We're down to a half a minute to play. Frank Clark with a three, and immediately Marshall wants to call a timeout with 26 seconds to go. 71-66, the Bucks by five. Closing in on their 12th win of the year. Six seconds to go, the Bucks lead it by five. Marshall's Frank Martin trying to get into the game by dialing long distance. And the phone was answered. Frank Martin, as long as he's on the floor, he's a threat. Marshall will probably foul. Look at this. No. Oh, that's got to be frustrating for those players to see those kind of things up in the stand. Rodney English, the feed to Silvers, oh. and they throw it away. Oh. This game's not over. Five-point lead, 15 seconds to go. Hey, you're going to see a quick shot and a foul or timeout. Martin takes a three, no good. High for the rebound goes English. The crowd wanted a traveling violation. That guy's a crowd, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd put a bag over my head, too, if I was sitting next to that guy. I'm not talking about Dwight Freeman. <laughs> These people with the bags over their head, I tell you, I, I, I'd be going up the stands and trying to reveal some identities. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Nine seconds to go, 71-66. Rodney English. Back iron, no good. Rodney struggled from the offensive end tonight, but he's done a great job on the board. Obviously, if you're Marshall, you want a quick hoop and a foul. English converts. They just need to just sit down. Just let them score. Pelfrey's got it. That should do it. Jump ball. Marshall's got it on the possession arrow with one second left. Simmons at the horn. And the Bucks win it over the Marshall Thundering Herd, 72 to 66 for East Tennessee State. They're now 5 and 1 in the Southern Conference. They'll stay atop the league. 12 and 5 overall. Marshall drops to 3 and 14. 0 oh and 5 in the Southern Conference. There's a good look at Alan LaForce. The victorious coach of the East Tennessee State Buccaneers. We hope to have a word in just a moment with Alan LaForce. This game was tied at 38 at halftime. The Bucks came on strong in the second half. Now the Olive Garden shot of the game. Talford goes to another gear and puts it home. One more look at it. Our Olive Garden shot of the game. Calvin Talford, the senior, goes baseline, puts it up and in, and he draws the foul to boot. So it's all over. 72-66. The Bucks over the Marshall Thundering Herd. And we've been joined by the victorious coach of the Bucks, Alan LaForce. Alan, how'd you turn this thing around at well, halftime? Dave, I, we uh, we never anticipated playing the zone as much as we did. Uh, we just didn't play any inside defense. They were taking the ball and going in there and scoring and scoring and scoring. And so we figured at halftime, if we can come back out and get any kind of offense going, that we'd go to our, our little matchup zone. 
So we went to the matchup zone, and I think uh, that was the difference in the ball game. We cut out the inside play, and then we relaxed a little bit and hit a couple threes. Jerry Pelfrey played well the second half. We hit some crucial uh, foul shots down the, uh, the stretch, and we just hung on. Uh, you know, we, we, it was not a pretty game by any stretch of the imagination, but we, a win's a win, and when you went on the road, uh, I'd rather have an ugly win as, as a, a pretty loss. So you said we're happy. Five and one now in the league. And although Greg Dennis struggled offensively for you tonight, Calvin Talford really picked up the slack. Well, Calvin Talford is, is an excellent basketball player. And uh, the last four or five games, Calvin has been the guy that carried us. Rodney didn't have a very good game. Uh, Greg didn't have a very good game. And so when you can win with uh, your big guns, so to speak, not having good games, although Calvin is a big gun, uh, then I got to be pleased with it. You know, you get on the road, uh, you never know what's going to happen. And, and Marshall, gosh, I hate to play this game because they've been they've on a losing streak. And, and our kids, uh, I don't know if they were focused as well as they should have been or not. But anyway, I got to give Marshall credit. They came out and took it to us, and uh, we we're just happy to win. Alan LaForce, the head basketball coach of the East Tennessee State Buccaneers. Congratulations Thanks, on an Dave. excellent victory tonight. Much. The Bucks. Over the Marshall Thundering Herd tonight, Ron, the Bucks really came through. Their veteran players did it when they had to. I thought they did, and I thought Jerry Pelfrey okay, played pretty okay. good off the bench, and uh, I thought they attacked the zone real well in the second half, and it's a big win, and as Alan said, it might not have been pretty, but you don't count them as pretty when you need a, a victory. That's the story from the Henderson Center in Huntington, West Virginia. The final score, the Marshall Thundering Herd losing to the Bucks of East Tennessee State, 72-66. For Ron Bishop, I'm Dave Weekly. We'll see you next time.